So I'm going to start with the first question that we're asking of all the candidates and the incumbent. Why are you running for the 24th Congressional District seat? Because I wanted to see change. Um, one of the issues that I had last summer, I, when I decided that I was going to throw my hat in the ring, I was running into people who were having a very difficult time with their health insurance. And I ran into a girl who was spending half of her income on her health care. And that just like, oh, that kind of spooked me out a little bit. And I'm like, ah, oh, that doesn't sound right. We need to improve that. And then I ran into um, an issue with, I was in a car accident, and then I ended up having some health care expenses that were like, oh, that's a little spooky. And then I um, been driving around San Luis Obispo County and I, you know, saw some infrastructure projects and I'm like, oh, there's some federal funds that we need to go ahead and start putting into these shovel ready projects. And the other issue was um, the SALT deductions with the last um, 2017 tax reform. And I'm sitting there going, ooh, a lot of my colleagues had to sell their properties and so forth because all of a sudden the deductions weren't correct, so they capped it at $10,000. So that kind of like, ooh. So I'm like, there's a few little issues. And, you know, in the past, I used to always just write to my congressman or go talk to people. And when I was really young, I used to write, you know, legislation and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, do I want to do that now? Or do I want to just go ahead and jump in there and, like, change the dynamics a little bit and see what kind of change can happen? As an independent, you know, I actually, both parties don't necessarily need a party really ever appeals to me. So I'm like, I have some idea. I Some of their policies work. Some of these guys' policies work. And I just want to, you know, I like to combine them and look at them. And that's kind of the, kind of the gist of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, what are the major issues confronting voters in the 24th District in 2020? Well, there's going to be a few things that we have to look at. We're going to need to look at energy, we need to look at health care, and we need to look at infrastructure. What's happening in the state of California right now is our energy bills are 40% higher than everybody else. Um, we have Diablo Nuclear Power Plant that's scheduled to shut down. We're trying to replace um, money with a long-term resource, and that's really not a fair comparison between the two. And health care, we need to start looking at preventative health. Um, and improving that. We're, America is a world leader in medical research. We need to start being the world leader in preventative health care. Is fossil fuel-based energy development more important to the 24th District as opposed to renewable energy sources? Well, fossil fuel development and fossil fuels, we started with fossil fuels in 1860, and that has created the world that we see around us. Um, we do need fossil fuels. We also need nuclear, but we also start need to start looking at renewable energy. All those sources of energy are very important. I actually support all types of energy and research on all types of energy so that we can be better used in our systems that we already have in place. Is climate change an imminent threat to our way of life? Imminent change, imminent threat to our way of life. Well, we see in Santa Barbara there was a discussion that we already are three three degrees higher than we've ever seen before, and it's getting you know it's it's scary a lot of people. But no, I, I believe that we're going to have that the Earth is going to stay here long term, and as long as we continue to progress as a human race, that we will also be able to develop. Um, uh, cohesion with the climate and we'll all feel good and everything will work good. How and why is the agriculture industry important to the 24th district? Well agriculture is kind of is one of the smaller it's about a two billion dollar industry and there's a lot of people who do wine um, and agriculture is all you know I, I grew up on a walnut farm and um, agriculture we need food um, but on top of food we also need the energy to create the food so um, in agriculture, we have a lot of labor, a lot of people. We create a lot of jobs, and we also create a lot of tourism with our, with our ind um, agriculture industry. And so I think agriculture is extremely important to us, and we also need to continue to develop, develop it. Part of infrastructure development is going ahead and clean, clean better roads, making better roads, and then we can go ahead and use more and more agricultural land in the future. Do you agree with the current federal administration on immigration issues? What changes do you advocate? The changes that I actually advocate are, I'd like to see a little bit longer time frame to get citizenship. Right now it's five years, 30 months. I'd like to expand that to seven years and down to 24 months of um, residency. Um, us in California, it's a very unique culture where we're far different than how the other states look at it. We're um, 
we have a lot more immigration and we are also looking at uh, ability to go ahead and uh, naturalize citizens that we do have federal laws that we have to uh, adhere by but we also have to look at the human migration that we all experience here in california where we are such a diverse and unique community throughout southern california and so i believe that we need to have better um, uh, work visas work visas is more and migrant visas uh, thoughts on the current impeachment process? Thoughts on the current impeachment? Oh man, that's a mess. <laughs> I actually think it was a, it's a mess on both sides. Um, what do you do about it? Um, I think it's important that we all look at, you know, hey, we need it. they wanted to impeach the president, but at the same time they didn't really have the goods to impeach the pre and president. Um, so I think it's a game that I don't want to be part of. <laughs> Um, assuming that President Trump is not removed from office, should he be re-elected in November? Well, I'm not here to discuss uh, presidential candidates. Um, I'm, my favorite candidate is actually Andrew Yang. Um, he's my favorite candidate. He has a lot of policies that I actually am learning from and that I like to implement in how I'm approaching things. Um, he's, he's free to run and let's, let's see, let the people decide. Um, what are your solutions, ideas to deal with the growing homelessness issue, say crisis, some say it's crisis, in the 24th district? Okay. Um, well, life, liberty, and human dignity are very, very important to uh, every human being. When we're looking at um, homelessness, you're, we may be dealing with mentally ill people. We're also dealing with a lot of displacement due to the economy. Part of we need to go ahead and look at energy transformation and infrastructure to be able to create enough um, buildings and so forth so that people can utilize um, resources and get more inexpensive housing. So that's part of my solution for homelessness is let's go ahead and create more infrastructure for them, more energy so there's more um, energy for them to go ahead and make, have a digni dignified life. Should access to health care be provided to all at federal government and taxpayer expense? Okay, so with healthcare, what happened in, in 1960, the family, people's family budget, 5% of the healthcare expense was healthcare. Today, that's up to almost 20%. Um, we have copays when we go to the doctor, and the reason why that is there is because, hey, you know, you can't be coming to the doctor for your psychological needs. You need to come here for important issues. I believe that preventative health care should be um, kind of more or less subsidized or rewards for going for preventive health. Meaning like, hey, give people an extra dollar to an hour because they went and saw their doctor on a regular basis, which is very important. But as far as total health care expenses on the federal dime, no, because uh, elective surgeries, a lot of elective surgeries can raise up those costs. We look at the Veterans Administration, and we look at Medicare, these things are always very expensive and we can't necessarily support everything. I mean, I have a couple friends who are dealing with the Veterans Administration and it's like, oh, single payer, ooh, <laughs> you know, so we need to really look at that and um, allow people to make those decisions individually. Okay. And then finally, is there anything else that you want to add? Um, no, thanks, Beth, for having me here. I really appreciate the interview. And, um, you know, you can check out my website. It's Ken Young 2020. I'm very passionate about energy, infrastructure, and healthcare.